a real regime almost. Oh, hell no. They're talking about me. All I needed was one ball. The science of training. And I know you don't think it's a sport. So how you doing, man? Congratulations on your big win at the Texas Pro. Thank you. That was a big Thank win, you. right? How did it feel? It was. It, was, it felt good. It felt good um, coming off of three years. It felt really good, you know? Nice, nice. Now, I first heard about you from uh, Rich Gaspari a few years back. He was very proud to have you on the team. At, the, at that time, you were working with a company, and he told me about you before I even, like, seen pictures or, 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 or heard about you. You know what I mean? He was the first one that told me. And then, you know, you came on the scene and it was like, you know, it was a big deal, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So it was um, before him, I was with Dennis James. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, I was with Dennis first. So Dennis is the one who actually brought me in the game of bodybuilding. He's actually the one who was my mentor in the beginning. Because my first show was in 2015 and I was at the Arnold. That was my first NPC show. I had done two or four shows prior to that. And um, so, yeah, I linked up with Dennis. I met Dennis through a friend, my friend Scott. And uh, <clears throat> he uh, introduced me to Dennis. After that, me and Dennis started working together um, for my first physique show, which was at the Arnold in 2015. How was it working with Dennis? Amazing. It's like my big brother. So it's cool because he teaches me. He taught me the ropes. Like, he taught me, you know, how to maneuver, how to um, negotiate, how to um carry myself in the in the industry he literally really taught me pretty much the the foundation of how to move in the npc ifbb now it's interesting you're still in the military right i am so i've seen interviews where you say that bodybuilding is still your hobby in a sense you take it seriously right. but it's your hobby and and right your main thing is the military and i guess you know you are the job you have other jobs right right so I'm part time in the I'm part time in the military, so I'm in the reserves, the Air Force reserves. Um, I'm a tech guy. I love tech, so that's where my heart is. My heart really is. Um, it's more so like the functionality of things. Bodybuilding kind of blends with that to where I understand and I've learned how to to how things function, how the body functions, and that's why I'm I feel like I'm a successful bodybuilder. But yeah, so the Air Force is my part time. I go, I, fly, I live in, I live in Phoenix. I fly to Minnesota once a month, one weekend a month for uh, two days. I've been there, and then um, my day job, I work at Intel, and I do photo lithography, which is the pretty much I calibrate machines that design microchips wow. or microprocessors. That sounds very mm -hmm. complex. It is. It's really. It's a lot of data analysis type job. Um, a lot of hands-on to where not necessarily turning wrenches, but more so programming and calibrating. So, yeah, so that's my day-to-day. -day. But you're still a pro bodybuilder. But all that you're doing is that's, I mean, right. pro bodybuilding is itself a, a job. I mean, how are you able to, to, to balance all that? So for me, it's one of those things where I look at, like, you just can't make an excuse, right? So on my work days, prepping for a show, like prepping for this last show, um, my work days, and now we're back, going back to back preps, right? Because of Olympia. Um, my work days, I get three hours of sleep. Three hours of sleep. You get three hours of sleep a day. On my work days, I get three hours of sleep. So four days, one week, I get three hours, and then three days the next week, I get three hours. I only work. I work four twelves one week, and then four twelves the next week. So on those days, I get three hours of sleep. Um, because if I sleep anymore, I won't be able to get my meals prepped, my gym in my fasted cardio, and I had to learn how to design my days in order to get everything in. So what I do is I'll <clears throat> stop my meals while I'm at work. My last meal will be 2 o'clock in the morning. I get off at 6 in the morning. I get home around 7 in the morning. Uh, I nap from 7 to 10. So since I stop my meals at 2, I give myself an 8-hour window of fasting. And I get up and I do fasted cardio at 10 o'clock. And then I continue my day, shower, meal. And then two hours later, I eat another meal, which is my pre-workout meal. I wait an hour, go to the gym, work out, do my workout, come home, shower, um, fix my meals for the rest of the day, 
and then I'm out the door to, for work again. So my work days are really, really hectic. They're really tight. Um, they have to be really, really scheduled, and I have to be really on it for my work days. My days off are when I actually get to tr- know my true weight because when I know when I sleep three hours, I only lose maybe two pounds while I'm sleeping. Um, when I'm getting a total of eight hours of sleep, I, get, I lose about five pounds. So we can get our true weight. We get my true weight on my days off, and then we work off of that. Um, and me and AJ Sims, my coach, Cement Factory, we literally – you had to get it down to a science, and we have it. So it's just good. But that sounds incredible. I mean, the fact that you sleep three hours a day, I mean, isn't right. sleep absolutely necessary for bodybuilding, for absolutely. recovery absolutely. and growth? Absolutely. So that, and that's why I say, I. it's one of those things to where when, during my preps, I'm mostly running off of adrenaline. So I'm running off of excitement. And, and you know, so I don't really ever, and it's in honest to God, it's, probably it's a blessing from God to be able to do what I do at this level and not get the full amount of sleep and work full-time job and work a part-time job as well. You know, it's, it's just a blessing from God. That's the only way I can explain it because there's no way I should be able to do all of this and not, um, and not, and not be able it, it, it be able to produce at the end of the day. Right. There's no way, like scientifically, there's no way I should be able to do what I'm doing. Exactly. But, so how do you do it? God. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the only way I can explain it. I can't explain it any other way. A lot of people are going to listen to it, right? And, and they say it's impossible. Three hours of sleep, I agree. it's impossible. I, I, listen, I understand. Jobs. I get it. I get it. You know, I work night shift. I, I, you know, I work 6 p.m. Like I said, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. You know? So it's, it's, it's the, there's no explanation for it, right? There should be, I should not be able to grow, you know? And that's what they say. But then again, through my whole career, I never really listened to what they said because I'm not them, right? So I don't, you know, you, you start to follow people who've done something, but they've learned their body. So that works for them. You don't know what works for you unless you try things. And me, I try everything. I don't take rest days, right? I train every single day, you know? So people say you're supposed to take a rest day. Well, I look at this. A rest day is a day that I'm not training that muscle. So that's my rest. So I train every single day, but that's just me. I'm not advising everybody to do that. That's just what I do. So, I mean, okay, so your genetics or, or the way you are has to, be, has to be, you have to be like a different type of specimen. You know what I mean? For me, it's more so, okay, so I look at it and I, yes, I have great genetics, right? And even growing up as a kid, my dad said, he was like, you, you had abs when you were little. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, you, you, you. And I was like, really? You know, and, and I've always been active too, right? I was always an athlete. You know, I started in karate, right? As an eight-year-old. Then I did kickboxing. Then I did boxing. Then I did football. You know, then I did Muay Thai. Then I did Taekwondo. I've done all the arts, right? So I've always been an athlete. You know, so it wasn't something, this is nothing, this isn't hard for me. I don't need motivation to do this. I don't need to be inspired to do this. You know, a lot of times they ask, like, who, who do you look up to, to, you know, for your bodybuilding career? So, nobody. I don't look up to any bodybuilder. I look up to my dad. My dad raised me. I know him. I, you know, and I think a lot of times we get caught up in people's accomplishments and accolades, and you don't understand that, okay, cool, but the regular working man, like my father, has accomplishments and accolades too, right? It may not be a bodybuilder, but my dad was a successful man in the court system, working in the court system, right? He was a court reporter, right? And it, it was just like, I've seen the accomplishments of my father. So that's who I look up to, you know? I got in the game late. I didn't, I didn't grow up looking at magazines and stuff. I, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I grew up as a kid. I just wanted to be, I really wanted to be in tech. I wanted to work at Intel since I was 14. I built my first computer when I was 14. Wow. You know, so. That's incredible. It's stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I got to be honest with you. A lot of people that, that are going to hear about this and they lost to you on the stage and they slept eight hours a day. I'm sure they're going to be ready right. to, to And hear that's that. the thing. It's different. Like, and I tell people, and my dad always told me, he said, favor isn't fair. Favor isn't fair. And, that, and that's just true. You know, um, everything isn't for everybody. Right? Just because you want something so bad, just because you want it bad enough, doesn't mean you're going to get it. It's not everything isn't for everybody. 
Um, and I and I understood that. You know, I had an ex that told me she's like, Man, everything you do, you're good at. I'm like, no, I know what I'm good at, and that's the things I do. Right. So that's a difference. And so I've learned that the fact that this isn't hard for me, I enjoy it. It's fun. I keep it as a hobby. You know, I think that's what makes me flourish in it because I'm the most, and this is crazy that I compete, but I'm the least competitive person you'll ever meet because I don't have that because I understand. I completely understand. There is nothing that I can do that will affect your physique, right? There's nothing I can do that will affect your physique. But, and there's nothing you can do that affects my physique. All I can do is bring my best. I've never, you, you'll never hear me say, oh, I'm calling out so and so. No, I won't. I won't do that because there's no need for that. You bring your best physique. I bring my best physique. We don't judge it. Social media doesn't judge it. The, the, the judges judge it. So at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do. I just... Do my best, and that's it. So, so my question is this to you, Robert. What if you would have to switch your schedule and actually sleep, you know, a full night and have... It'd be scary. It'd be scary. I, that's what I'm saying. But I don't have that luxury, right? I don't have the luxury of that. You know, um, right now, you know, it's just me. You know, everything I do is out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? So I... It's, it, but but I, and, and I'm okay with that because I have a good job again. You know what I mean? And I can afford it. Right. It's just it's like I say, for me, it's more so if I were to do that, we don't know what would happen. It may be scary. Do you want to do that one day? Do you want to do one day where bodybuilding is your main thing? I thought about that. And. I feel like I don't I don't know. I, I honestly don't know because I'm not moving to the open. I would never move to the open. That's not something that I would want to do. Um, I love classic. I, I think classic is amazing. Um, but would I ever want to do a full time? I, I don't know. I, you know, because this takes a because one injury you can be over, right? So that's the that's the part that I'm always not gonna say always playing it safe, but it just has to make sense. It really has to make sense for me to just switch and just do this full time. But do you have the desire to be to beat Chris Bumstead, for example? Do you have the desire to be a number one? I have the desire. My my desire doesn't lie in that. That's that's why I feel like I'm so successful. I've never desired to look at Chris Bumstead and be like, I want to beat him. Like, I don't have the choice, and it's not my my choice. It's the judge's choice. But the only thing I can control is my physique. And how I look on stage. That's it. That's all I can control. So all that other stuff, oh, I could be, I would be, it's noise. It's noise, right? It, it, may, it has no nothing to do with me. At the end of the day, the only thing I control is me. That's it. Right, right. Well, forget about Chris. I mean, do, do you have aspiration to, to win the Olympia, basically, put it that way? Of course. I wouldn't compete if I didn't, right? That, that's a waste of time. I'm, not, I'm, ne I'm never going to go to a show. I told the guys backstage in Texas. You know, they were like, you know, it was funny. It was funny. Kind of, it's funny. You kind of get those those people who, and I'm, I, I like read people really, really well, right? And, uh, you know, they come up to you, hey, man, good luck, man, good luck. But in their head, they're like, I know I got you. I can beat you. I'm not worried about you, you know? So, you know, a lot of them did that to me, and I was like, oh, okay, you know? And um, we stripped, the, well, they stripped, they, they, they called classic, the lineup and everything, and they, they stripped down. You know, they start flexing, posing, da, 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 you know. And I keep, I always keep my hoodie on. Like, if you, if you ever see me back in the in any show, I always wear, I fully clothed. I wear my long, um, I always wear Adidas jumpsuit. You know, that's all I wear. So, you know, they stripped down everything, and then, then, then I stripped down and get old, and they were like, "Bro," I said, "What's up?" And they're like, "Bro, we did not know." And I was like, "Oh, I don't come here to lose. I never come to a show to lose. You know, I come to compete. So that's." That's my thing. I don't have to be a braggadocious about it. I can be nice to you, but I'm never going to come to a show to lose. There's no, re like, DJ taught me in the very beginning. He said, Robert, if you have to go to the Olympia on points, you don't need to be at the Olympia. And I said, okay. So that's what stuck with me.